Watch as I break down an inspired deck known as The Machine. Welcome to the Oath Breakdown. If you enjoy fun, budget Oathbreaker content like this, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications so you know when we have new content for you. This deck is inspired by one of my favorite movies of all times. Please try to guess in the comments below which movie you think it is. I think this one's a little easy. On the Oath Breakdown, I break down a budget Oathbreaker deck designed to introduce new players to the format and build it back up so you can see how the deck works and how it was designed. Now let's get into it. In today's deck, we are going to utilize each ability of our Oathbreaker, Tezzeret, Agent of Bolus. Tezzeret, Agent of Bolus, is a 3 loyalty planeswalker that costs 2, a blue, and a black. His plus 1 ability is look at the top 5 cards of our library. We may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into our hand and put the rest on the bottom of the library in any order. His minus one states target artifact becomes a 5-5 artifact creature. And his minus four says target player loses X life and you gain X life where X is twice the number of artifacts you control. Tezzeret's plus one ability will give us draw and card selection all at the same time. His Minus one, for our purposes, is a permanent pump spell that would turn non-threatening artifacts into credible threats. And finally, the piece de resistance, his minus four, will provide us with a life drain slash wind con that is just sitting in the command zone for us to abuse. The signature spell we are running in this deck is Thoughtcast. For four and a blue, it has affinity for artifacts which will reduce its cost by the total number of artifacts we control in colorless mana. And when we play it, we get to draw two cards. Thoughtcast is highly abusable as a draw spell in artifact-themed Oathbreaker decks. Because you know the strongest thing you can do in Magic is cheat on mana cost. Most of the time, this spell will let us draw two cards for a single blue mana, since we will be flooding the board with an affinity style base and pay off that accrued commander tax for the previous castings. Now that we know what is in the command zone, let's dig into the game plan. We are going to utilize the value of Tezzeret's abilities and flood the board with cheap and free artifacts and overwhelm our opponents. How do we win? Our goal is to kill with Tezzeret or barring that, we do have some backup plans that I will cover during the course of this deck tech. This is a very focused deck and in my testing it is approximately a power level of six. Now on to the breakdown. In our first section, we'll be focused on what we can play for free or a reduced cost in freebies. Mimnite is a 1-1 artifact creature that costs us 0 mana. Ornithropter is a 0-2 flying artifact creature that costs us 0 mana. Frogmite costs 4 mana as a 2-2, but he also has affinity, so he'll often be free. These are all great creatures that we can target with Tezzeret's second ability, especially Ornithropter or any other flyer in the deck for that matter, because we go from a 0 cost 0 2 with flying to a 5 5 with flying, since Tezzeret's ability doesn't say non creature artifacts. And that little distinction goes a long way for us. Next, we have Vault Scourge. It's not quite free, but since it costs one and a Phyrexian mana, we can pay this for one colorless mana and two life. It has flying and lifelink, and as a 1 1, and again, another great target for Tezzeret's middle ability. Mirror Enforcer for seven mana also has affinity for artifacts and is a 4-4. We want to play even more artifacts for as close to free as possible, and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that in the bargain bin. Chief Engineer for one in a blue is a 1-3 Valdalkin Artificer, and it states that artifacts we control have Convoke, and that means that we can tap any number of our creatures to pay the colorless mana in our artifact spells. This deck is running 30 creatures, so the odds we're going to make use of this is a no-brainer. Ethereum Sculptor for one in a blue is a 1-2 creature that says our artifact spells cost one less to cost, and Foundry Inspector for three mana is a 3-2 that does the exact same thing. Joyra's Familiar for four color mana is a flying 2-2 bird and makes all our historical spells cost one less to cast. This is important 
because this will affect our legendary planeswalker, another legendary creature we have in the deck, and all of our artifacts. Lead in Mirror for two mana is a 1-1 mana dork that taps for a black, and Silver Mirror is the same, but it taps for a blue. Now, if you think I'm done looking for ways to flood the board with freebie artifacts, you'd be wrong. Let's add some more in, more skilled than a swordsman. Efficient Construction costs 3 and a blue. It's an enchantment. It says whenever you cast an artifact spell, create a 1-1 colorless Thropter artifact creature token with flying. Thropter Spy Network for 2 and 2 blue says at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control an artifact, create a 1-1 colorless Thropter artifact creature with flying. Whenever one or more artifact creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. That's a nice little bit of ed card advantage stapled on the end there. Mirrored and Besieged is an enchantment that costs two and a blue, and it actually has two different modes, and depending on the game state, we can utilize either. As it enters the battlefield, we choose Mirren or Phyrexian. If we choose Mirren, whenever we cast an artifact, we create a 1-1 colorless mirror artifact creature token, and that can be important. If we choose Phyrexian, at the beginning of our end step, we draw a card and discard a card, and then if there are 15 or more cards in our graveyard, target opponent loses the game. If we're running through the game and a lot of our artifacts keep getting board wiped, this can become a win condition. So losing our artifacts is not a negative thing for multiple reasons that I will explain as I go through this deck tech, but that little bit of card selection in the Phyrexian side is also good. Next we have Sharding Sphinx for four in two blue. It is a four four flying Sphinx. Whenever an artifact creature we control deals combat damage to a player, we may create a 1-1 blue Thropter artifact creature token with flying. Thropter assembly for 6 is a 5-5 with flying. We're not always going to get to use its ability here I'm about to read, but it's still nice to have as a backup. At the beginning of our upkeep, if we control no Thropters other than Thropter assembly, we can return Thropter assembly to its owner's hand and create 5 1-1 colorless Thropter creature tokens with flying. Finally in this section, we have Mirror Battlesphere. It costs 7. It is a 4-7 artifact creature mirror construct. When mirror battlesphere enters the battlefield, create four 1-1 colorless mirror artifact creature tokens. Whenever it attacks, we may tap X target mirror we control. Then, if you do tap those mirror creatures, mirror battlesphere will get plus X plus O until end of turn and deals X damage to the player or planeswalker it's attacking. That damage before the battlesphere even gets through can be amazing and game ending. But let's move on to our next step and let's talk combat specifically in our next step. Stronger than a giant. For one mana, Signal Pest is a 0-1 with Battle Cry, and it can't be blocked except by creatures with flying or reach. This little bit of evasion is important, and its Battle Cry ability will act as an anthem on attack, and we're okay with that in this deck. Glaze Fiend, for one in a black, is a 0-1 with flying, and whenever another artifact enters the battlefield under our control, it gets plus 2 plus 2 till end of turn. So if we can quote unquote storm out with artifacts in a turn, this can be a terrifying beater. Steel Overseer for two colorless is a 1-1 that says tap it and put a 1-1 counter on each artifact creature we control, which can be terrifying. Chief of the Foundry for three mana is a 2-3 that just says artifact creatures we control get plus one plus one. Master of Ethereum for two and a blue is got power and toughness each equal to the number of artifacts we control and each other artifact creature we control gets plus one plus one. Master of Ethereum costs two and a blue as power and toughness is each equal to the number of artifacts we control and he will give all other artifact creatures we control plus one plus one. Hover Mirror costs two colorless and is a flying vigilant 1-2 mirror. Manifold Key costs one colorless mana. If we pay one and tap it, we can untap another target artifact, or if we pay three and tap it, target creature can't be blocked this turn. Because it doesn't specify who owns that creature, we can use this to help get opponent's combat damage in against another opponent as a political maneuver, or we can use it to help get our own creature damage through. Cranial Plating for two says the equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each other artifact we control, which is great. And for two black mana, we can attach Cranial Plating to another target creature we control. This is an excellent pump, and attach can be done at instant speed while it's a 
equipped can only be done at sorcery speed, so that's important to know because this is also a combat trick. Now every once in a while we're going to need to get back cards we've lost. And how do we get them back? Well, we're going to treat them like they were only mostly dead. Mirror Retriever costs two colorless mana, so 1-1. One, one. When it dies, we return another target artifact card from our graveyard to our hand. Junk Diver for three colorless is a 1-1 one, one flying creature that says whenever it dies, we return another target artifact creature from our graveyard to our hand. Scrap Trawler for three mana is a 3-2 that says whenever Scrap Trawler or another artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, we return to our hand target artifact card in our graveyard that has a lower cost than that card. And Workshop Assistant for three is a 1-2 construct. It says whenever it dies, we return another artifact card from our graveyard to our hand. So all of these do a very similar function for us. Now, along with the cards we have in our command zone, the cards we can rescue from our graveyard, and a couple of cards in our token selection, we are going to need some additional draw to help keep us going. So, I'm going to cover that in the next section, Smarter Than a Sicilian. Padim, Console of Innovation, costs 3 and a blue and is a legendary creature the Dalkin Artificer, and he is a 1-4. He states that artifacts we control have Hexproof, which is an excellent protection for us to extend to our team, and at the beginning of our upkeep, if we control an artifact with the highest converted mana cost or tied for the highest converted mana cost, we get to draw a card. Contentious Plan for 1 and a blue says Proliferate, so we'll usually use that to make sure to put our 1-1 counters on all our artifact creatures again if they're out. But mostly it's in here because we want to proliferate Tezzeret so we can use his final ability more than once a game. And the draw card is just wonderful. We'll take that. Riddlesmith, for 1 and a blue, is a 2-1 that offers us card selection. Whenever we cast an artifact spell, we may draw a card, but then we have to discard a card. Since we're probably going to end up in some one-on-one -on -one Planeswalker dueling, and when we're dueling others, we do it to the pain. Phyrexian Revoker for two colorless is a 2-1 artifact creature horror, and as it enters the battlefield we choose a non-land card name. Activated abilities with that chosen name can't be activated. If you want to have a fun game with your friends, then you probably shouldn't name their Planeswalker. But if you feel like a Planeswalker is going to alt or go off, this will turn that Planeswalker off and make it altogether useless until they can remove the Revoker from the battlefield. Spark Hunter Masticore for 3 colorless is a 3-4 Masticore. As an additional cost to cast the spell, we have to discard a card. It has protection from Planeswalkers. We can pay 1 and it will do 1 damage to target Planeswalker. And if we pay 3, we can make it indestructible till end of turn protecting it. Since it already has a defense of 4, it gets around a lot of direct damage destroy. But the addition of that indestructible will allow us to use this to hold down our opponent's Planeswalkers. Probably the best anti-planeswalker spell in the deck is the Elder Spell. For two black mana, we destroy any number of target planeswalkers, and then we choose a planeswalker we control, and put two loyalty counters on it for each planeswalker destroyed this way. This is an excellent way to boost the loyalty on Tezzeret, allowing us to use his abilities more frequently. Battle at the Bridge. For X and a black, target creature gates minus X, minus X till end of turn, and we gain X life, which is great. This spell also has Improvise, which states that instead of paying the colorless mana, we can tap our artifacts to pay the cost. So once we've flooded the board with enough artifacts, this is also an amazing life gain spell. And that type of double utility is not bad for Oathbreaker. And finally, if we can't kill with Tezzeret on the battlefield, and we can't kill with combat, well then, let's drain our opponents out in the Pit of Despair. Disciple of the Vault costs 1 black, and it's a 1-1 one, one human cleric. Whenever an artifact is put into the graveyard from play, we may have target opponent lose 1 life. This is going to make some of our opponents terrified to remove even our 1-1 one, one token creatures, and it will make it all but impossible for people to want to board wipe us, as it will come at a high, high cost. Marionette Master for 4 and 2 black is a 1-3 that does something very similar, but it's very important why it's different. She has Fabricate 3. When she enters the battlefield, you can either put 3 1-1 one, one counters on the creature, or create 3 1-1 one, one servos. Most of the time, I suggest 
putting the three 1-1 counters on it, because whenever an artifact we control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, target opponent will lose life equal to marionette master's power. So if we put cranial plating on this to pump it way up, or we do anything to raise marionette's power even higher, and we lose an artifact creature, it becomes the type of drain effect that could drain somebody for almost their entire life. Now that we have gone through all the cards in the deck, let's see how we power the machine in the mana base. We're running three artifact lands, Dark Steel Citadel, Seat of Synod, and Vault of Whispers, because they will also count when we trigger Tezzeret's ability. And extra zero cost artifacts on the field do not bother us. They do come into play untapped, so there's no reason not to run these over a basic land of the same type. We're running Mishra's Factory. We can tap it for a colorless, or we can pay one and turn it into a 2-2 artifact creature until end of turn. We're running two lands that we can tap for either of our colors in Demir Guildgate and Dismal Backwater. When Dismal Backwater enters play, we gain one life. Both of these lands sadly do enter play tapped. And finally, we are running eight islands and six swamps. Now that we have looked at all the cards in the deck, let's do a quick price check. Our deck prices include our Oathbreaker and the shipping cost of the deck, but not the cost of basic lands. And these prices are based on the best available prices on TCG Player at the time of recording. The average deck cost of a Tezzeret Agent Abolus deck on oathbreaker.edhrec.com is $330.93. Our deck is going to be a steal at $32.01. If you want to see the breakdown of this deck's cost, there will be a link posted in the description. Now, this deck was built on a budget, and if you have the resources, here are some betterments and improvements you might want to consider. First, add a Hex Parasite. For one mana, say 1-1, one, one, we can pay X in either a black mana or two life to remove X counters from target permanent. For each counter removed this way, Hex Parasite gets plus one plus out till end of turn. This has a great ability because we can use it to hurt 1-1 one, one counter strategy decks or other counter strategy decks, and it is still Planeswalker removal. And to add it, we're going to suggest we remove Spark Hunter Master Core. Next up, we're going to suggest adding Emery. Next up, we're going to suggest adding Emery, Lurker of the Lock. For two and a blue, she's a 1-2 Merfolk Wizard. And the spell costs one less for each artifact we control, so we'll usually play her for one blue. When she enters the battlefield, we put the top four cards of our library into our graveyard, but then whenever we tap her, we can target an artifact in our graveyard and we may cast it this turn. So this is even better recursion for our deck. In order to add it, we're going to suggest removing Battle for the Bridge. Next up, we suggest you add a Shimmer Mirror for three colorless mana. It's a 2-2 with flash, and it gives all our other spells flash. And that can really put the game on our terms whenever we need it to be, and we don't have to dedicate everything to the board as often, and we can play a little smarter. To add it, we're going to remove our Hover Mirror. Next, we suggest adding Mystic Forge for four colorless. We may look at the top card of our library at any time, and we may cast the top card of our library if it's an artifact card or a colorless non-land card. If we tap in pay one life, we can exile the top card of our library, getting you know dead draws out of our way, but this is essentially one of the best draw engines we could add to this deck. Manifold key is what we will remove. And then finally, we suggest adding Ugin the Ineffable. For six colorless mana, he's a four loyalty planeswalker that says colorless spells cost two less to cast. If we Plus one him, we can exile the top card of our library, and we create a 2-2 spirit creature. When that spirit dies, we get to draw that card into our hand. And for minus three, we can destroy target permanent that is one or more colors. The main reason to add Ugin is for that cost reduction for our artifacts, making it far easier to play the deck. And to add it, we're going to remove Mirror Enforcer. Did you like the deck? If you want any of the cards out of the deck, please shop with my LGS, Mythic Games Colorado. I will put their link in the description. Check out our Oath Breakdown playlist, and if you want to learn more about the Oathbreaker format in general, I will link a playlist explaining the format. Again, a huge thank you to my viewers. I can't do this without you guys, and I wouldn't. 
Thanks again, and I'm off to Oathbreak, another deck.